What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So, as you guys know, I was in New York City all week for consensus. <sighs> but anyway, let's talk about something else. But unfortunately, guys, I wasn't able to come out with a video yesterday. And the reason is just to kind of get this out of the way real quick. So basically, my town got hit with a tornado, which is insane because we haven't seen anything like this in literally decades. So, I mean, you could see right here. Last night's tornado carved a path down the main drag, peeling rooftops away like they were paper. 24 hours later at Washington and Liberty, volunteers had already cleaned up the mess. So you guys could see it was really crazy. I mean, this is a view outside my house. You could see all the trucks. They were lined up here. So basically, guys, um, I didn't have power for over two days and I obviously didn't have any Wi-Fi. So that was why I couldn't get a get a video out. So but we have so much to talk about. Stick around, guys. We're going to go through so much today. So the one good thing about consensus, though, was, you know, obviously this thing that was walking around. I don't know. That is really weird. But yeah, no, actually, one of the greatest things was really just getting to meet a lot of people, just get to see a lot of people. I mean, you know, uh, if you guys didn't see, I did a live stream on uh, Crypto's channel, uh, Crypto News, you know, Omar, Blockchain Brad was there, and Michael from Box Mining. So if you guys want, you can check this out. Uh, I'll drop a link in the description. We were all super exhausted at the end of the night. So that I will leave for you guys as well. I also got to meet Spunky. Uh, if you guys don't know who this is, you probably don't. I met him at the Block Nation party out there, and he has uh, bitgosu.com, and his YouTube channel is like one of the biggest YouTube channels in South Korea. So we were discussing maybe just doing a fun collaboration, you know, for the English speaking viewers. That might be kind of cool. Um, also, I got to meet, let me get out of the way, these guys over here. So obviously, you know Brad, but these guys on the end right here, that is actually bite size capital. And I have to say, I am I was massively impressed with the, the amount of research that these guys put into their content. It was it blew me away. I mean, you gotta see the it's really, really impressive. I mean, they're definitely looking for good quality projects. They are uh de just definitely guys, if you want to follow them, their their research is top notch. So I will definitely just say that. And then also we got to go to the after party. Now this doesn't really look as good as it did in real life, but it was a real, it was beautiful. It was out by the water. I got to meet some other nice people over there. Uh, I got to meet the man, the myth, the legend, the, the voice behind ready, set crypto. I can't even do it, but yeah, that was awesome. Obviously crypto, crypto candor came out. That was really nice to meet Alex in person. We've obviously talked hundreds of times on video and phone, but that was awesome. It's really great to meet these people in real life. Um, then getting on to some of the projects so I can kind of update you guys on what I'll be doing on the channel. I had an opportunity to talk to Chris Say from Cardstack. Um, I've spoken about them before on the channel. They are a very, very complex project. Um, basically, they're, it says they're an open source framework and consensus protocol that makes blockchains usable and scalable for the mass market, creating decentralized software ecosystem that can challenge today's digital superpowers. So as you can see, the experience layer of decentralized internet, really, really, really in-depth uh, project. And so I spoke with uh, Chris and he's going to come on the channel and really explain this to everybody. I was actually even thinking about maybe doing it on a live stream so that you guys could kind of ask questions as well. Because this is just one of those projects that's really super complex. And um, I was going to do a review on it, but I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to get the guy on and talk about it because it's so much better. Um, <laughs> yeah, funny when a card stack gives you a card stack. Very literal. Very literal, guys. Um, and then one of the other uh, projects that I also wanted to kind of shine the light on was High Performance Blockchain. I had an opportunity to speak with uh, Emma, the rest of the team over there, you know, Mr. Wang. And we are looking to also do a little bit of an interview, kind of talk about some of the updates of High Performance Blockchain. You guys know I'm a fan of it. I love the idea of using the, the hardware and the software to basically accelerate it, you know, and um, really, really interesting stuff. I mean, these guys are doing a lot. You know, this hardware could potentially be used to power other blockchains. I mean, you could see them, you know, you could see Neo using high performance blockchain and stuff like this. So d they're definitely doing some really awesome things. I'm definitely uh, looking forward to that. And then here's just a picture of us all hanging out. I mean, really, it was just a good time for me. I heard, you know, there was a lot of you know, I read a lot of things on Reddit. People were complaining, saying, oh, the whales and it's all manipulation and the cost was ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it, it was really expensive. And honestly, there was a certain aspect about it that wasn't really what I thought it was going to be. Um, it didn't, you know, it felt less, 
it felt less about the innovation and more about the making money aspect of it at certain points. And I mean, we all want to make money, don't get me wrong. But, you know, unfortunately, that sentiment driven and then you're seeing the markets dip at the same time. So actually, let's have a look at the markets while we're at it. But, you know, the only thing I could say about that is it really does suck in a way. But at the same time, there really are still these really great projects and there is great tech and there are going to be great things that are coming out of this space. It's just really sad to see so many people just primarily just like money driven, which I get it. I get it. That's how it goes. But um, yeah, so there was a lot of lot of lot of not too good news uh, about that. Now, as far as this dip that we're seeing, I mean, it could be anything. There is manipulation going on. I mean, that's pretty much just a given at this point. I'm not even gonna try to pretend like there's not. Um, some people did have to take some profits. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I had to cash out some Bitcoin because I had to pay for that freaking ridiculous expensive trip. So I had to cash out some of my own Bitcoin. So maybe maybe the reason the markets are taking a dip is because everybody's broke after consensus, right? Uh, probably not. But, um, I mean, hey, it's Friday. Great opportunity to buy in low, right? Unfortunately, everybody's scared to buy in right now because of what's going on. But with the prices in the red, it wouldn't be a bad time to load up should you choose to. But understandably so uh, with the you know sentiment right now that it's a little scary. So we are seeing Binance coin doing the best today. One of the very, one of the few coins that are actually doing well. So Binance is doing very, very well, followed by Huobi token. So this does make you wonder if, uh, you know, you look at the market cap of Huobi token. Now I've seen Huobi a lot. They've been at every single summit that I've gone to recently. And I know that they are trying to up their game. They're trying to be a competitor to Binance. So when you see this market cap only of a quarter of a billion, basically, and you compare it to the 1.6 of the Binance coin, Kind of does make you scratch your head and go, maybe I should start buying some Huobi tokens. Not financial advice, but when you see what Binance has already achieved, it does make you think. Now, one of the reasons, too, that Binance could also be pumping could be the fact that Binance has officially announced that they're going to double their referral commissions for holders of 500 uh, BNB or more. So basically, if you hold more than 500 Binance tokens, you're going to see your commissions for referring new users uh, go from 20% to 40%. So is that the reason that it's pumping? I don't know, but that kind of makes sense, right? I mean, the more Binance you hold, uh, the more the you're gonna double your referral fees. So that's just some incentive to buy some of that as well. Um, some of the news you're also seeing though, on top of that, so you're having this really bad sort of negative sentiment of consensus, but then you're also seeing Apple's uh, Steve Wozniak dumps Facebook and thinks Ethereum could be the next Apple. Right. So I'm not going to go into this article, but basically, you know, you still have these people looking at the blockchains, looking at the technology and realizing the potential for it in the future. And, you know, like I said, I do know that I couldn't get all the news out to you. But what was really, really awesome was I was browsing Reddit this morning and I found this uh, article by Quantal. It's uh, Quantal Tix Research. I don't know. But so this Redditor basically was like, well, while everybody's busy paying attention to Consensus Week, he actually made a list of all the important news events, like the real news events that were happening in the background while consensus was happening. So I'll drop a link in the description because I have, there's no way I'm gonna cover all this in this video. So if you guys want, these are some of the major, major, major things that happened in crypto. Uh, So I will drop a link in the description for that as well. Now, one of the things that I wanted to talk about too is this website. Now you guys may have heard of it, you may have not heard of it. Um, Obviously, I just recently heard about this. So it's Howie Coins. So here's the website right here, right? And it looks like a regular website. It's got um, you know all these discounts. Here's the team, right? Totally looks like a normal team to you. Nothing, nothing strange about the team, right? Then they got uh, these uh, Twitter accounts down here that are saying all these different things. So the thing is, is and they have their own white paper. They have their own white paper. However, one red flag, first of all, right off the bat, should be this white paper is only nine pages long. That's like aren't white white papers are like minimally like 60 pages now, right? Like the bigger, the better, right? So anyway, the whole joke about this thing is if you go, you put your email in, you click submit, it actually takes you to here, investor.gov. And it's basically the SEC warning you saying this was a fake site. This is how easy it is for them to get you. And, um, you know, they go down here and they talk about red flags, you know, claiming high guarantee to return celebrity endorsements, saying that they're SEC compliant, investing with a credit card, pump and dump scams. So basically, 
This was all just an elaborate scheme by the SEC to just create a fake website to basically show people how easy it is to get duped. Also, I like the choice of the name Howie Coin, which is, you know, basically paying homage to, you know, the Howie test. So I just thought that was really funny as well. Now, what I want to get into today, I want to talk about briefly, quickly, but we got to get to it. We have six main nets coming up very, very soon. So I wanted to kind of just go through these really quick and let you guys know exactly what's going on with that. So number one is Knowles. Now Knowles has not given a specific date, but they did say it's coming out in May. We're in May right now. So I would assume that that's coming out very soon. You know, some of the advantages of Knowles is they have the multi-chain mechanisms, cross-chain consensus. So that's really cool. So Knowles is coming out sometime. We're not 100% sure just when. Then we have Oyster Protocol coming out May 29th. So it's basically a hybrid blockchain built on IOTA's Tangle uh, technology and uh, Ethereum smart contract frameworks. You know, they have this line of code that you put in and then it says, you know, website visitors contribute a small portion of their CPU and GPU power and then in return you'll get paid. So it's kind of like fighting back at... Um, you know, advertisements all over the web and all that. I'm sure you guys know what it is. Just figured I'd talk about it real quick. So that is um, May 29th. Then moving forward at the very, very end of the month, we do have Tron coming out on May 31st. I don't think I have to go over Tron. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what Tron is doing. But I will say one thing, Justin Sun, he is a competitive guy. I'll tell you that. He says that he, he aims to basically dethrone Ethereum. That's out of his own. That's out of his own mouth. So, and you know they're looking to have a lot of DApps uh, running on it as well. So Tron, twelve days away, guys. Big things coming as well. We also have EOS, the year-long ICO. Man, it's been a crazy year with EOS. You guys all know the journey I've been on with that. Everyone, you know, we've seen this coin go from sixty cents all the way up to over twenty. I was like twenty-two dollars at one point. So Dan Larimer's baby EOS that will be out June second. So uh, obviously, keep a lookout for that. We also have Ontology. Now, Ontology, you know, they're coming out quarter two, they said. So Q2, well, that would mean June would be the last of Q2. So at some point, we're probably going to be expecting this main net in June. I'm very excited for this because I want to see what they're going to do with the dApps. You know, they do have these partnerships and collaborations with Sequoia Capital, Danhua Capital, Matrix Partners in China, the Zen Fund. So they got a lot going on for them. I just want to see what they're going to do with these partnerships and I can't wait to see the dApps come out and also the final main net that we have released and I think this is probably one of the most anticipated I could be wrong but I mean you know they had the the V chain meetup that happened the other night so that's coming out June 30th and the one thing that I want to say about this is they have an incredible list of partners and they are just also waiting to roll out the dApps as well so we have V chain on June 30th and then in other news speaking of V chain as well I wanted to say that they just just tweeted the VeChain Thor Alpha test starts today. In addition to the testing by multiple professional security firms, they say we will host a private bug bounty program on the HackProof platform. For those who applied, please look out for the invitation. So that is the news that also came out of the camp today. So those are the six main nets that you guys have to look forward to. You have Knowles, Oyster, Tron, EOS, Ontology, and VeChain. So if you guys are looking to any of those, we don't know. I mean, you know, it used to be the main net, you'd see the coin soar. Recently with main nets, we've actually seen the price kind of dip before the main net goes live. You know, everybody's about, you know, buying the rumor, selling the news, but, you know, be careful, watch it, you know, just, just, be, just be aware that these are up and coming. So there will be some type of price movement. In which way, we don't know, but there will be price movement. There usually always is. So check that out for sure. Um, I also wanted to talk, you, you guys might have seen this, the Civic demo they had at Consensus. So basically the Civic app, had, you would identify yourself with your, um, you know, your ID and everything else. And then basically you could just take that and you could just buy the beer using Civic. So basically they're trying to revolutionize that way of age verification utilizing the blockchain. Um, I didn't get a video of it, but there's a whole bunch of videos online about it. You could, uh, I think Ken Bozak, I think he did a video. Uh, there's, you just go there and you'll find it. There's plenty of demonstrations of how to use it, but that I just wanted to use as somewhat of a segue into uh, basically, so you have, um, <clears throat> so the uh, Civic, 
they actually have launched a decentralized verification system and a social media platform for the crypto uh, community. So basically, this is dubbed ID codes, okay? And the mechanism has been integrated with the website, I think it's Hilo or Hilo, it's H-I-L-O, okay? It's a social network platform for both experienced cryptocurrency traders and newbies that when launched will provide information on crypto tokens and prices. ID codes provide users and institutions with an independent way to authenticate their identity for social media profiles, company profiles, and more. So that's just some stuff that's coming out of Civic, guys. I mean, I've been following Civic for quite some time. Um, I used to own some Civic back in the day. I don't anymore. Uh, that was a long, long time ago. Um, but I still follow it. I still think it's really cool. Uh, you know, the CEO, real great guy. So that's coming out of Civic. Um, also, we have some news coming out of uh, Walton as well. So Walton visited the Shenzhen Retail Business Association and started cooperation negotiations. So the Shenzhen Retail Business Association, for you guys who don't know, I wanted to just kind of clarify how big this is. This is really big news. So they were established in 1997 and they represent the leading force of Shenzhen's commercial and service industries covering shopping malls, department stores, supermarkets, brand chains, franchises, convenience stores, and car maintenance chains. Currently, the association has over 400 members with 60,000 stores and 750,000 employees. And in 2015, the total sales were around $78 billion. Okay. So they say as a leader in blockchain and IOT industry, Walton chain has strong competitive advantages, such as the independent blockchain technology and RFID chip R and D. We hope to have the opportunity to develop in-depth cooperation with them and these aspects and obtain tailored industry solutions for members of the company's association, uh, for member, companies of our association. Yeah. So that's really good news coming out of Walton. I mean, Walton, these guys, they're doing it. You know, this is what I want to see. I love to see these projects, you know, getting out there, getting things done, moving forward, getting the partnerships, getting the tech out there. 2018, we are going to revolutionize it. We're, we're going to have to see those those, those uh, more than just minimal viable products. I mean, we want full scale products. I want the Civic app in my hands. I want the Walton Chain RFID, you know, on the tags in the stores. You know, we want V Chain and 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 Ontology and all these all these projects. You know, Icon. I, did, I actually I don't really have any any Icon news in the video today, but um, I got you know I did get a chance to meet Min Kim. That was really cool. We're we're trying to get an interview on the channel as well. I know they have a lot going on. That's just kind of a side note. Um, also just some real quick news guys, you know, just got to cover this. So you do have the snapshot for Travala, which is the AVA. They were concierge. They rebranded. Love the name guys. It was a great, it was a great name choice. I think Travala is so much more professional sounding. So they're going to be doing an airdrop. You have to have at least 2000 switchio tokens and that's going to happen on, uh, Monday, May, uh, Monday, the 21st of, of this month. Oh, let's see. What do we have? Another news, another news. Oh, yes, guys. So I tweeted about this also. This was a live stream uh, last night. It was an AMA, which you were more than welcome to get involved in, obviously. So this is Joya Hoddle from Deep Brain Chain. She went over the new AI miners and everything. So if you guys want, I'll drop a link in the description for that as well. If you're interested, they're pretty expensive, but um, it's nice to see them actually coming out with some products. You know, like this is what I'm talking about. Like we got the, we got the AI miners coming out from Deep Brain Chain. You know, that's really awesome. Like I'm glad to see these projects actually producing, right? Because that's what we want. We want to, you know, we want to see them doing things, right? So in other news, this this was a very interesting story, actually. So you have the Kick founder. This the the the, uh, the article says plots a rebel alliance against Facebook's Death Star. So I wanted to go into this. This is really really interesting, right? So this is uh, Ted Livingston, uh, Kick's um, founder, right? So. He wants other social apps to use cryptocurrency, uh, to use the cryptocurrency kin for payments and other services. So guys, just listen to this. Just, just listen to this. This is really interesting. So Kick launched profile codes in 2016, and then Facebook's Messenger app did the same. Kick launched chatbots, and Facebook Messenger soon followed. The same goes for features like stickers and usernames. But unlike some startups that Facebook has copied. Uh, out of existence or or uh, basically bought them or shut them down, Livingston has managed to keep the company alive and independent. He's convinced that Facebook is eventually going to launch their own cryptocurrency. He says they've been copying us for 10 years and the lessons that we've learned is to set things up so that when they do copy us, the outcome will be different. 
Livingston's counter move, an anti-Facebook alliance. Yes, guys. So he's starting an anti-Facebook alliance. Each company that Facebook has copied has had to take on Facebook alone, he says. Snapchat suffered when Facebook and its subsidiaries Instagram, Messenger, and WhatsApp launched versions of its popular stories feature. Facebook also cribbed features from Foursquare, Twitter, and Vine. He says, but what if those Facebook competitors worked together? So Kik's plan requires convincing sizable allies, some of which compete with Kik's own messaging app, to adopt Kin as a way to make payments on their platform. The white paper for Kik's cryptocurrency explains it will court brands, platforms, and seven categories of apps, including e-commerce, education, gaming, knowledge sharing, messaging, social networks, and virtual goods. So guys, they are forming an anti-Facebook alliance. They're, they're saying that they are the rebels and Facebook is the evil. Uh, <laughs> they're just, he just made a bunch of like Star Wars references. So Facebook is like the Death Star. Or actually, more specifically, their cryptocurrency could be the Death Star. So that was just a really interesting article that came out. Also, guys, really quick, I'm just going to say uh, CP Chain. They recently partnered with the Trusted IoT Alliance. And they have this really cool video down here. Um... Oh, I think I have it on mute right here. So yeah, they have about us a really everywhere. cool video that they came out with. Come to CP Chain, a brand new world. It's storage and computation. <laughs> so there's that video over there. Um, oh, let's just talk about some news, right? Why not? We're on here. Let's talk about some news. So you have Mo- uh, Monax or Monax, the company that recently acquired the hacked Japanese crypto exchange CoinCheck has revealed plans to expand the exchange in the US. So they say Japan may seem like it's one step ahead in crypto, but in terms of deciding what's a security or a token and attracting institutional investors, the US and Europe are moving abroad. Um, also, so we have the Federal Council of government in Switzerland have re- they basically requested a report to assess the risks and opportunities of introducing its own state-backed digital currency, which they're looking to dub the e-franc. So the federal court is aware of the major challenges, both legal and monetary, which would be accom- accompanied by the use of an e-franc. It asks that the proposal be adopted to examine the risks and opportunities of an e-franc and to clarify the legal, economic, and financial aspects of the e-franc. So moving forward, we're probably going to see a lot of these countries looking to maybe have some digital currencies of their own. You know, we've heard things about the Fed coin. I mean, we've seen the petrodollar, which I I don't know. Is that doing too well? I'm not too sure. So, I mean, these are things that we're obviously going to see moving forward. Um, and actually, getting back to my first story, I probably should have went into this one next. So, the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange has developed a first-of-its-kind blockchain-based security lending platform. Now, I wanted to tell you guys, last night at the um, the, meet, the um, award show, award ceremony, I was actually talking to Kyle from A-Chain, and he was telling me that these platforms and these exchanges are going to be heavily looking into security tokens. Now, I know you're like, oh, security tokens, aren't they like a bad thing? No, that's the whole thing. You're going to see a lot of these companies actually putting their tokens openly as security and you're going to see these security exchanges, all right? And a lot of startups are going to move away. Well, I mean, I can't speak for them. I don't know. But from what he was telling me, a lot of them are looking to move away from traditional IPOs into ICOs. And this isn't even just crypto. This is anything. This is like anyone. They're looking to basically move into security tokens rather than traditional stocks. And this this market could be huge. This could be something that could really blow up. So pay attention to that. So basically, this exchange will reportedly create one central platform called Blockchain Securities Lending, or BSL, which aims to revolutionize the securities lending market in Israel. Well, they're going to start in Israel by enabling direct lending among all other major financial instruments. So keep an eye out for these security uh, exchanges, guys. Um, I don't know, but from what from what Kyle from A-Chain was telling me last night, he was saying that basically this, this is going to be something that we're going to be seeing a lot more of. And on final, one final note, we do have Bitfinex requiring uh, basically U.S. citizens to fill out this tax thing. So Basically, Whalepool said Bitfinex is now requiring users to give their tax information so that it can send it to BVI, which will exchange it with your country's tax authorities. We strongly disavow. 
If you also disagree with the decision, peacefully protest it by withdrawing your money from Bitfinex. To which Bitfinex replied, we have not sent this message to all users. We have deliberately, deliberately targeted users that we believe have an obligation to self-disclose. If a user has not received a message from us, then he or she uh, doesn't basically have to worry about it. Uh, so with the deadline to submit the information for May 24th, customers, according to the notice, must complete self-certification forms depending on whether they're individuals or entities and whether they're residents or citizens of the U.S. So just more bummer, more bummer news for the U.S., guys. More, you know, it's like, I don't get it. But anyway, whoa, why did I end on such a down note? No, I shouldn't have done that. Hold on, let's go back to this. Yay, Spunky. <laughs> Yay, blockchain bread and the city. Yeah, guys. Anyway, so I had a good time. I hope you guys enjoyed my news video. Uh, we had a lot to cover. I know this video was kind of long. Um, it feels great to be back. I have no intentions of leaving. I'm, I got I, mean, I got to stay home at least for a week and just chill. I mean, it was just nonstop going on three hours of sleep every single night. But guys, I know the markets suck right now. I know it seems crappy with crypto. Um, yeah, there's a lot of manipulation, unfortunately. People were cashing out. Uh, and another thing too, you gotta think too, there were a lot of companies promoting ICOs. There were a slew of ICOs. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of investors were cashing out to put their money into these ICOs as well. So that's something you also have to consider. You know, There's so many different things it could have been for why the markets are doing what they're doing. But like I said, it's Friday. Uh, potential opportunity to scoop up some of those projects. Uh, that you guys have been looking at if you want, but I can totally understand if you're freaked out right now and you don't want to buy any more crypto. I don't blame you with everything that's been going on. But at the same time, you know, it is a good opportunity to scoop up cheap cryptos. So that you have to decide. I can't decide that for you. But as usual, guys, I will be here every single day on this channel. No matter what happens, markets go up, markets go down, markets go sideways. I'll be here, guys. So that being said, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. To everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commenting, you guys are freaking amazing. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.